guys, and we continue learning the most frequent English vocabulary in context. I'm teaching you the most typical grammar collocations with this top 200 English words, and we also go over idioms and phrasal words, everything you will need for everyday speaking. The trick of the vocabulary distribution inside the language or inside the society who speaks this language is that we mostly use the same words again and again and again and I am sure you have already given this a thought. Yeah? People often ask me how many words do I actually need to know to speak English confidently and I am always telling you First, master the top 200. Be very confident about these words. Yeah, N Know all their ups and downs. And if you can use them in the correct context, if you can form correct phrases, you will be speaking well. And then you can build on that. Yeah, You can expand your vocabulary even further. If it's the first video you have watched from us, Please go to our YouTube channel or to our Facebook page, Smart English Learning, and you can find more lessons there, which are available for free. If you want to unlock the premium ones, please refer to patreon.com slash Torda. We add two more lessons to the ones available every week for just a small fee, and you can get access to all this exclusive content in our Patreon page. Thank you very much for watching and we are starting. Today we are talking about the verb to look and this is one is really tricky because last week I was telling you about this take verb and I told you there is one direct meaning, the first meaning in the dictionary and there are some other additional ones and these uh, meanings are used unevenly so to say some of them are very popular some of them are not that much but in the case of look we have two we can say contrasting meanings which are equally important we use the verbs okay the verb look in both opposite meanings all the time and they get mixed up and they are sometimes, oh, there are some grammar complications about that. And you, of course, need to have a very clear understanding how it works. Let's do it together. The verb look, first of all, it's an action of moving your eyes, of placing your eyes on something. I am looking at you right now. You are looking at me. My cameraman is looking at me in a funny way, by the way, right now. And this is the action, the physical one, which we can see. Mm -hmm. And you need to remember that because in this meaning it's an action verb. It has two present tenses. You can say look at me. You can say, I am looking at you. Okay, no grammar limitations here. Look here, for example, yeah? This is the first type of structure. But the second meaning will describe the sight of something or somebody. It will mean to seem to appear, for example, you look great, yeah? How do I look today? Mm -hmm. And this is a little bit different because, first of all, you are on the opposing side of this process, but it is also a state verb. It means that it only has one present tense. It can never be used in continuous. Yes, I can ask you, how do I look right now? I will be using right now, but because it's a state verb, I will be always using present simple with it. That's why it's really important to remember that. Yeah? If you are using the form, are you looking? You mean the action. But if you use do you look, you can actually mean two different things, right? And in this case, yeah, when I was asking how do I look, yeah, it's very important to remember one thing. 
how you ask about the appearance of something. This is really tricky. People make a lot of mistakes here. Before, I asked, how do I look? And I was asking about right now. Yes, I was asking about the state, so to say, of my look. Do I look bad? Do I look good? And so on and so on, yeah? And this was just the moment. It was not the all-time quality. But when you are asking a question about the person's appearance all the time, not about the state of their appearance, but, yeah, I mean, terrible, good, bad, I don't know, you look sick, for example, yeah? When you are asking about the color of the hair, the color of the eyes, the shape of and complexion of the face, about the height, about the build, everything about the constant qualities, you can't use how anymore. And this is very important to remember. How is only describing temporary states. You describe constant quality with what? That's why the correct question about someone's all time, okay, constant appearance, it sounds funny, but I'm just trying to communicate this idea to you. It will be, what do I look like? This is a very unlikely question because we don't very often ask ourselves about <laughs> our appearance, right? But what does he look like? What does she look like? What does your mother look like? All the time, yes? Is she short? Is she tall? I, I hope you get the idea. Don't forget about this difference between what and how. It is actually one of the most common mistakes in the English language and I don't want you to make it anymore. Okay? I hope you get it. But we are going on. The difference between taking an action of looking and the appearance of something gives us a couple of grammar difficulties here. When you are describing the action, yes, you won't say to look how. You will be using an adverb like after normal action verbs. Mm -hmm. Look at me carefully, carefully. Look how. Yes, you are describing the character of this action. Uh -huh. Look fast. But when you are describing the appearance, it's a state verb and it's a copula verb. Copula verb uses adjectives to describe the quality of this if you want to say how I look, you use an adjective but not an adverb. You don't ever say you look seriously or you look, I don't know, greatly or whatever. You always use the adjectives. You look scared. You look good. Not well. You look... I don't know, beautiful. It's a mistake to say you look beautifully. And I know, for example, if you speak Russian, in Russian we will say ты выглядишь как хорошо. An adverb, наречие. But in English, after look, meaning the second thing, the appearance, you always use the adjective, which is different from your native language. Please take note of and now let's think about the most typical collocations, okay, with both meanings of look. I can't say that there is a long list of some set expressions, but we very often say look carefully, mm -hmm, with, with some intention, with some energy, yes, with some attention also, you can say. So look carefully will be one of the most typical collocations. But here, for example, we very often say look likely, this is a very funny thing, or unlikely. Okay, does it look likely? Meaning, is it possible? Does it look likely? 
No, it looks unlikely to me. Yeah, there is very little chance of it. It looks unlikely to me. We also say to look lost. To look lost, you look lost, I lost, yeah? To look lost. And we can say to look hurt. You look hurt. Hurt is an adjective also, not just a verb, yeah? Hurt like meaning offended. Yeah, in a negative way. You look hurt. Have I offended you? Have I said something wrong? Mm -hmm. These are the typical phrases which you will hear and see with these verbs. But of course, when we mean the second meaning, the structure look like comparing the looks of something with something will be very typical too. You will say, you look like a clown. She looks like a typical man. She looks like a blonde girl. Yeah, something like that. Like compares, yes, the appearance of the people mm -hmm, with something. And there is also one good set phrase we use when we are describing some strange looks from people. When you see the person and they look as if something happened, for example, yeah? This is a good one. Look as if or as though plus the past. And you are comparing the person, not with another person, but you are comparing them with the situation. I will give you some examples. You look as if something terrible happened. And you see, yeah, here we are speaking hypothetically, we don't know what actually has happened. That's why we'll be using past or even past perfect is very, very typical here. You look pale, you look as if you had seen a ghost. Yeah, oh my God. You look as if you had seen a zombie, for example, yeah? You are talking about some hypothetical situation which could have given the person such a strange look. Yeah? Usually about be people being scared, but uh, it's also possible to say about positive things. You look as though you have won the lottery, yeah? or uh, you look as though you had won the lottery. Oh, you look so happy, okay? as though you had won the lottery. These two phrases, they are the same, the, the conjunctions, as if and as though. As though will be more formal, it's used in writing mostly, but as if we prefer to use it in speaking. And for now, we are done with this. Yes, we now know how to describe the appearance of something. We know that we only use the adjectives describing the type of someone's look. And we know how to compare people with people or people with some situations. Let's go back to this direct actions, yeah, so of moving your eyes towards something. I already told you that there are not so many set expressions here. But what you need to concentrate on here, and it's really important, it is the preposition. When you want to say about the object of your look, mm -hmm, a lot of people are trying to say on, but it's not quite correct. When you are saying what the, the thing you are looking, you use at. Look at me. I am looking at the screen, I am looking at the window, not through the window, but at the object. There is another preposition which will change the meaning of this work a little bit. You can also say look for, meaning to search for something. What are you looking at? I'm asking about the direction. What are you looking for? Okay, I'm asking what you want to find. And because these prepositions are so strong, they're very closely connected to these verbs, we never skip them. <laughs> These tricky questions with the hanging prepositions, right? If you start with what, you don't skip the preposition. Otherwise, you understand, yeah, if I say what are you looking, 
you will lose the meaning. You will not understand what I am asking about. Yes? In this case, the preposition belongs to the verb. It always stays after it. What are you looking for? I'm looking for my glasses. Yeah? I do that every day. What are you looking at? Yes, I'm asking about the direction of your look, okay? I am looking at the camera right now. Don't skip them in questions. They are very important because you will change the meaning of the sentence. Before we move on to the phrasal verbs, because phrasal verbs with the verb look are very important for the English language, I wanted also to mention one very little thing. We use look at the beginning of the sentences to direct someone's attention. When you want to start a phrase, yes, you can say, look, you don't mean literally that it's very important that the person looks at you, yes, while you are speaking, but you want to make sure the person is listening to you. That's why it can be a text linker, we call it a discus marker, yeah, the functional phrase to attract someone's attention in an informal conversation. Look, mm, we could go to the cinema or look, it's too expensive, yeah? Or look, I think something like that. And you continue with what you wanted to say. I hope it's clear now. We have divided that into two meanings for the word look. And we have discussed the grammatical patterns typical for every meaning of the verb look. Otherwise, they, they will get mixed up. And in the next part, I will tell you about the most typical phrasal verbs with the verb look. Don't go anywhere. Okay, guys, welcome back. And right now we will learn the most typical, the most frequently used phrasal verbs with the verb look. Really, this group of phrasal verbs is considered to be top used. And uh, yeah, look, because it's so flexible in its meaning, it is used a lot as a part of the phrasal verb. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. All right. Okay. First of all, to look after will mean that you take care of somebody. Be very careful with care for, care about or something like that. We have a video about these tricky phrases with care. Please look it up and I have given you the link in the top of the video. But here we will be talking about taking physical care about uh, old people, yes, about sick um, children, maybe sick people, about animals, yeah, for example, who is looking after your cat when you are traveling? To take care of. Yeah? <clears throat> then you will say, I'm looking after my mom at the moment, she's ill, for example, or I have to take a look after my a sick brother, yeah? Or, for example, yes, who is looking after your cat right now, yeah? Because you are now traveling. Then to look around. To look around, it means just to go and see the details of something. The next one, to look around. To look around means to go and see the details of something. For example, you are choosing a flat or a house for yourself, yeah? You will look around. You don't need the object here. This is very important. You don't look around the house. No, you just look around. Let's look around. Yeah, let's see what we have here. Do you want to look around? I will leave you for five minutes. Just look around, yeah? You can tell it's about the area, for example. When we were looking for our flat, the area was the most important thing for us. And we looked around we found the shops, the doctors, yeah, everything we needed for the comfortable living and we chose that flat, yeah? We looked around first. The next one, to look for, I've already mentioned it several times, this means to search. 
And here, remember that some students mix up to find and to search. To find means the result of some action, but the process, okay, the searching process is often described by the verb look for in speaking. Yeah, we are looking for a flat. To look forward to. If you are learning English for business, this will be a very important formula because it is used to invite the person to answer you in a polite way. And we often finish the emails with this phrase, it's formal style, I look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, And be careful because here we use the verb in the inform. This is very important and this is strange because we don't use to with a gerund very much. But for this particular verb, it's important to remember. To look forward to means to wait for something very, very impatiently. You are looking forward to something positive, to something good for yourself. Also, we have this verb to look into. To look into, it is to learn all the details of something. We often say like to investigate. Yeah, to find a solution to the problem, to solve the crime, and so on and so on. So I will look into it. I will look at every detail of this case and I will find a solution for you. Do we need somebody to look into this case? If you are writing to the technical support, you can say, can somebody look into this matter for me? Yeah, can you investigate this matter for me? Also, very popular one, when we talk about dictionaries, encyclopedias, any kind of references, when you want to find a word in the dictionary or you want to find some information in Wikipedia, for example, you will use this phrasal verb to look up and it can go in two different types of structures, to look up something or to look something up. To tell the truth, we use this more often, look it up in the dictionary. And yes, you can't say look for it in the dictionary. It's just not how it is usually used. Look it up. Look this. I mean to look this word up in the dictionary, for example. Yeah. Will you look it up for me? Can you find this information for me? Somewhere yeah, in the books, for example. Can you look it up for me? And another look up but you add the third element here, we say look up to, okay, when we are talking about admiring somebody, when you, we are talking about somebody who you want to be similar to, your hero, your idol, if you like. To look up to, it is always somebody. Mm -hmm. He always looked up to his brother, for example. He always wanted to be like his brother. This is again another popular phrase of work, will look. So I hope now it's clear, it's not such a long list and if it feels like a lot, it's very important to find the examples. For example, you can go to vocabulary.com, look it up, <laughs> yes, look any verb up and the system will give you a lot of examples how this phrasal verbs is used in different genres, yes, in, in business, in the news, and so on and so on. And then try to make your own examples. Try to catch yourself, try to find those situations where you would use that for your own English speaking reality. Just take a think, concentrate a, a little bit, watch it again if necessary, and thank you very much for watching this lesson. Don't forget that you can always unlock more premium lessons on our Patreon page. For that, go to patreon.com slash soda and get a hold of all this top used English vocabulary and its collocations and phrasal verbs. Thank you and I will see you next week. guys and we continue learning the most frequent English vocabulary in context.